Hi guys, this is Divorced Asian Dad coming at you with another video, Finding a Great Wife. Now, I'm very excited to talk about this because it's been two years since I got remarried and I'm still in disbelief at how great it turned out. In this video, I'm going to share my opinion and experience on how to find a great wife that will elevate the quality of your life to the next level. Now, I know some of you can't relate, and I sure couldn't when I was going through my divorce, but I would have liked to see something like this just to lighten up a little bit and to start believing in the possibility of finding a great life partner after divorce. But first, let me give you an idea of what I mean by a great wife, because everybody's definition is different. Now, to me, a great wife is someone that brings lasting peace and joy and a genuine love to my life. Everything in my life is drama free. I feel that my day to day life is moving forward and I'm free to explore my potential and be the best version of myself. Now, a great wife is someone that shares the same goals, principles and values that I do and we work and support each other to make our married life joyful, fulfilling and truly happy. Now, if that resonates with you, and you're at least open to entertaining the possibility, then keep watching so I can share some of the tips on how I did it so that you can take what I said and maybe apply it to your life. Now, don't forget to like and press subscribe, you know, below for new videos coming out every week and watch till the end of the, you know, end of the video for a bonus clip of my comedy set and I hope you know, it'll give you a little bit of a chuckle because, you know, everybody needs a chuckle or a laugh every now and then. So, let's get to it. First, let me do a little bit of bragging about my wife. She's super cute, 15 years younger than me, never been married before. She's a veterinarian and she's one of the most spiritual, non-materialistic and kindest person that I know. Men, did I get your interest? So meanwhile, I'm 54 years old, divorced with two kids, had high blood pressure, diabetes, and kidney failure, and I was in financial debt at the time. So <laughs> you can understand when I tell you that it was a miracle that I got her. Now, tip number one. Heal, heal, heal. As I said before in my previous video, you have to put in the time to write yourself mentally, emotionally, and physically, and there are no shortcuts. It's a day-to-day -day grind, and it requires a lot of self-forgiveness, letting things go, rediscovering the good in you, and being grateful that you are still living and on this earth to turn things around and have the opportunity to recreate your life. Can I get an amen? <laughs> so now, I'm not saying that you can't date or meet women while you're trying to better yourself, but know that if you're broken inside like I was, you will attract some degree of brokenness if you believe the law of attraction. Like I said, it's a daily grind, so keep at it. It's not for nothing. It will pay off sooner rather than later like it did for me. So tip number two. Take responsibility for your life right now. It's easy to blame your ex-wife, your job, or whoever or whatever led you to getting a divorce, but that's all in the past now. What I'm talking about is your present and your future, and that's all on you. Blaming your ex-wife for everything that happened is not an attractive quality and it will just sound suspicious to a potential partner if you claim that you were perfect and it wasn't your fault, but even outside of finding a new wife, forgiving yourself is important because it will help you truly move on and be in a better place for a new relationship. Now, you can easily slip into the blame game and feel sorry for yourself, and to be honest, that's okay. It's your choice. I have friends that did that, and I love them dearly, but I know that I can't save them from themselves. And if you want an awesome life post-divorce, you're going to have to man up and do it. I mean, you know, I did it as well and it was hard for me, but know that there are resources like this channel that you can go to and inject some encouragement and motivation to push you on to your best life post-divorce. Now, tip number three. 
Invest in yourself to be a high value man. Sit down and write down pros and cons about you. Be brutally honest with yourself. I know it's hard like it was for me to look at my weaknesses and shortcomings and failures, but just think about it this way. Pretend that you're the woman that you want to be with. Would you want to be with you? Now, I know that that's harsh and it's a brutal question to ask yourself, but I'm helping you to win and in order to win, you have to do what you need to do to get what you want. As a man, you know, you can appreciate that, right? Now, I gotta be honest, when I saw my own list of cons, I didn't believe that I would ever have a shot at getting remarried to a good woman. I didn't believe it, you know, that it was even possible. But I told myself that I have about 20 to 25 years left on this earth and I could either spend it lonely and broken or I can at least try to better myself and at least have a fighting chance of, you know, finding an, a happiness and uh, wanted to at least try because I felt that I had nothing to lose at that point. Now, once you've written down your pros and cons, take stock of what's good about you and really feel proud that you have good points and it's not totally bad. But take a long, hard look at your cons. First, ask yourself, are you honestly willing to change or at least work on it? If not, that's okay. You know, but if not, you know, get to work. These days, there's a lot of resources that you can tap into to improve whatever you feel you need to improve. For instance, if you think you're unappealing to, the, to women, there's a billion ways you can do to improve your situation. I mean, take me for example. This face is not going to attract anyone. Strike one. Plus, I wasn't well off financially. Strike two. And I'm Asian, which is well known not to be good with the ladies. Strike three. But I'm smart, thank God for that at least. So I created what I call the boyfriend package. What I mean by that is if you're a salesman trying to sell an unappealing product, me, <laughs> and you need some more, you know, benefits and features to convince the prospective buyer, you know, good women, that you're worth it, well, remember, what I'm talking about is taking responsibility to improve yourself and to improve the value uh, as a man, you know, to women that you want to attract. Now, I asked you to write down your pros. Well, your pro list should specifically include just your, not just your personality strengths, but you know, like kindness and generosity and being a beat, but it should also include skill sets like being a good provider, having good communication skills, or being good at playing an instrument. Well, <laughs> I had none of those, so I had to think of other things. You know, I took stock of what, who I was or what I was. So for me personally, I was loyal, which is easy because women weren't breaking down my door to get to me. And I was easy to get along with, which, uh, you know, since after going through a horrible divorce, all I cared about was having a long lasting peace in my life. Everything else was unimportant. I have a good sense of humor, which is why I'm a stand-up comedian, but you know, my one superpower is that I can give devastatingly good massages. So good that once you go dead, you will never be sad. <laughs> I mean, I learned to uh, massage because I saw that 99% of men are unwilling or unable to give women a good massage. And guys, they love it. When you massage a woman, it releases feel-good chemicals in her body as well as relieves stress and pain. And she will feel good. Most importantly, she will connect those good feelings to you. Now, I'm not saying to go out and learn to massage, even though that might be a good skill set for you to learn you know, as part of your boyfriend package, but uh, think of what special skills that you have or that you could develop to increase your value as a man, you know, as an attractive, high-value man. So, I hope this has helped you and at least give you a good laugh. In case you want a few more laughs, here's a clip of my comedy set, as I promised, to lighten up your day. You know, drugs in prison are easier to get than drugs on the outside. Yeah. So one time this inmate came up to me and said, hey, you want to buy some drugs? And I said, I don't know. How much does it cost? <laughs> I'm not admitting to anything. He said, 
And I said, $200? What is it, made of gold? No, man, shipping and handling. <laughs> you know, tattoos are different too. Uh, they tell you like, you know, in the big house, they tell you like what gang affiliation they're in and also like what prisons they've been to. But where is the tattoo that says, I make fucked up decisions? <laughs> You know, women in prison do get pregnant in prison. See, they do it by going out on work detail to clean up the local streets and their boyfriends are waiting out there in the bushes for them. Now picture this. The boyfriend has to finish in under 30 seconds. There's cars whizzing past them. And there's a prison officer with a shotgun waiting to shoot them or arrest them if they get caught. And they still do it. Man, that's my definition of horny. <laughs> horny, horny, horny. Uber horny. How you doing, horny? <laughs> yeah, but you know, eventually I had to give up the prison game. I got anxiety attacks every time I saw a bar of soap. <laughs> <laughs>